Scientists have found antibodies against enteroviruses in the cerebral spinal fluid of children with acute flaccid paralysis. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the Narrowing the Cause of Acute Flaccid Paralysis edition. I'm Julie Wolf, Science Communication Specialist at ASM, and today we'll be highlighting a report that was published in ASM's MBIO journal, which you can find at mbio.asm.org. The take-home message from this report is that scientists are closing in on the etiology or cause of acute flaccid myelitis. This is a mysterious condition that causes a flaccid paralysis where the limbs of the affected people, mostly children, will go limp. Uh, and as you can see from the incidence report from the CDC, there have been 570 cases since the CDC started tracking in 2014. There's a biannual periodicity so that every uh, every second year, the incidence goes ways up, goes way up. But uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't any cases in the in-between years. This year, 2019, there have been 19 cases of this AFM so far. The suspect, or one of the suspects that may be a factor in this AFM, is enteroviruses. Uh, this is a common type of virus that is passed between many types of individuals, including children, and can cause things like asymptomatic infection, relatively mild gastroenteritis, uh, and very serious conditions such as uh, meningitis. Uh, however, in this case, what the scientists are trying to show is that an enterovirus, uh, specifically enterovirus D68, is associated with this acute flaccid myelitis. On the right-hand side, you can see a graphic, a uh, electron micrograph of the enterovirus. I believe this is D68. It's a RNA virus, and the darkened circles are vi uh, virions that have incorporated that RNA viral genome, whereas the ones that are a little bit lighter have not properly incorporated the viral genome. So to look for a direct um, link between viral infection and this acute flaccid paralysis, the scientific team used a method called VIR-CAP-SeqVirt, uh, which was discovered in, or was um, developed in Ian, Lipkin, Ian Lipkin's lab. And Lipkin, as you can see, is the senior author here. They use this method to detect any viral genetic material that is at least 60% similar to known viruses. So if there's any type of enterovirus or other virus, this method should be able to detect it. In the cases that they investigated, however, they only found an active enterovirus uh, infection um, by detecting that viral genetic material in a single case. And that was in the lone adult case of acute flaccid myelitis um, in this particular study. This gives direct evidence for infection with enterovirus during an AFM presentation. However, what they wanted to do was to look for evidence of previous infection. And they did this using a microchip that could detect antibodies to different human enteroviruses. Uh, the enterovirus-specific antibodies were found in the cerebral spinal fluid of 79% of the cases that were studied. In this case, that means 11 of 14. This offers indirect evidence of prior enterovirus infection. Now, they are able to differentiate what type of enterovirus those antibodies are uh, recognizing, and of the 11 positive samples, six were positive for enterovirus D68 antibodies. Uh, however, there was no viral genetic material found by that VIR-CAP-SeqVirt method that I mentioned before. Uh, one of the pieces of evidence is shown here. It's a graphic showing the enterovirus D68-specific antibodies that recognize a 12-mer peptide that represents part of the capsid protein of that enterovirus. And the different cases are grouped together. You can see the CSF is on the top. That's the cerebral spinal fluid. And the sera is on the bottom. So the um, CSF is a slightly immune privileged site. There are, it, it's not easy for large molecules such as antibodies to travel back and forth between the sera and the CSF. So they tested both CSF and the sera uh, independently. And they looked not only at people who have AFM, but of course, several negative control groups, including people who do not have uh, AFM, which is shown uh, directly next to the AFM cohort, a, a cohort of patients who have Kawasaki disease. This is an inflammatory disease that um, should not be related to an enterovirus infection. And adults who have a CNS disease uh, that is unrelated to an AFM presentation. So things such as multiple sclerosis. 
And you can see that the titers of those antibodies were by far the highest and most commonly seen within that AFM cohort, uh, with very few titers and very low titers, if any, seen within those negative uh, control cohorts. This uh, study was uh, promoted the NIH, as you'll see on the next page, uh, they released a press release um, in which they made sure to emphasize that other ideologies of AFM are still being explored. Um, however, this study does provide further evidence uh, when accumulated with other pieces of evidence that enteroviruses may play a role as a factor in AFM. However, this careful wording was not picked up by all news outlets. Uh, WPXI, for example, uh, use the headline that researchers are close to finding a cause for AFM and possible cure. Now, we know here on Microbial Minutes, if you're listening, you probably know that finding um, a cause and finding tools to diagnose a cause are quite different than finding a potential cure. The piece itself was much more carefully done. Uh, we'll include a link. It's a video story if, uh, if you want to watch that. Uh, and in this piece, they highlight Anthony Fauci, the director of the NIH, as saying, we're at the stage where we feel comfortable that we're getting enough accumulative evidence that we should go about the direction starting to develop countermeasures, admitting that developing countermeasures is really uh, its nascency here. If you want to read more summary about this particular study, we can include a link where you can read it on Virology Blog. This is a blog run by Vincent Rockaniello. And we'll also include a link to a, a podcast episode of This Week in Virology that covers the AFM epidemic and its relation to enterovirus, uh, which was current as of October 2018. Today, we've seen how antibodies of uh, AFM patients continue to build a case that enteroviruses may be a cause of this mysterious condition. For future updates, be sure to subscribe. I'd like to thank you for listening and thank Ray Ortega for production. I'm Julie Wolf, and I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.